So I'm here loading up a G code file for a buddy's uh, project. Here's my settings for uh, G code. This is the older version of G code. I have an older uh, second generation Wanhao i3. These are great settings um, if you're a beginner starting out. You need to know what to set things at. This is what I'd start with. Um, we'll go to the advanced tab here. These are really good settings. Um, if you're just starting out and you're using PLA, that's pretty important. These are PLA settings, but make sure you set it. Um, you just do custom settings. You know, you go to add new machine, plug in uh, 200, 200, and 180 for your dimensions. And then uh, you also want to um, click that you have a heated bed on there. I think that's all you need to do there. And then print all at once under tools, set that. And that's pretty much it. And then, uh, so yeah, then you load in your file, move them around how you want them. I usually just let them fall right nearest to the middle, and uh, then you just print it. All right, here with my Wanhao duplicator i3. Just reloaded the filament. Um, I'm gonna check and see if this code that I put in is gonna work. This G code. I haven't ran this printer in a couple months, so yeah, it's doubtful it's gonna work on the first shot. I had to get a new version of Cure because my old other laptop crapped out between now and then. But uh, it's about to start printing. Uh, I think my settings is comes on at T20. So let's see. I don't have my filament, my little half-ass filament hook up, hooked up. This is my nice. Wowzers! Did that before, but wow, that's something else. It's a lot worse than before to figure that out. It's the it's the Y stop. The, the tray there in the bottom has a stop, and obviously it works. <laughs> it's done that before though. So let's see what happens. That was the first problem already. Material there. That's not good. Let's see if we can move that. Moves out of the way. It might be able to. Tip number two. So far, so good. Got it right now. So far, so good. Looking good. So, if you're unfamiliar with 3D printing, uh, the way that it works is uh, this is essentially a hot glue gun. That's a roll of the filament they call it. It's basically just plastic. And when you heat it up, it melts. Um, this machine just moves this bed backwards and forwards. Um, that bar obviously moves side to side, and it can also move up and down on these screws on these rails on both sides. So it's called the X, Y, and Z axis. That's basically your three-dimensional space. And what it it go it starts out by laying down a thin layer um, on the bottom, and it works its way up layer by layer, and it builds up your part. I'm sure most of you are familiar with what 3D printing is, how it works. I just thought I'd throw that out there, just in case you didn't understand the concept. Um, so this thing's just going to gradually build up the device, which I have saved as a G-code file, and put into this box the uh, 
micro SD slot. So it's that simple. Essentially a toy. These can be had for somewhere around a hundred dollars. Just set up a workstation. Uh, need very limited tools. It's a fun hobby. It's not very expensive. And you can make a ton of things. You can find them on a website called Thingiverse. You just go on Thingiverse.com and go on your phone or a computer and download all the files you want for free to keep you busy with your printer. I mean, you'll never run out. There's a lot of things that'll blow your mind on there. Just anything you can think of is on Thingiverse for free. So until next time, I'll talk to you a little bit later when this is done. All right, it's been going for about 10 minutes now. So check this progress. Still on the first layer, but uh, I always put the first layer really slow on uh, making it order to aid in it sticking to the, the bed, they call this. My particular printer, I have a glass plate or a glass bed. Uh, very helpful uh, thing. I spray it with uh, this type of hairspray, Aquanet Purple. This extra super hole is kind of, I don't know, I heard from a guy that's a professional that that's the secret to make it stick. Um, past I've used glue stick. Elmer's glue, um, a lot of different, a lot of different methods, but I'd say, uh, this glue stick too. It's this purple glue stick we're all familiar with from school. This stuff works pretty good too, but I prefer the hairspray. I just bring it in my bathroom, spray the glass sheet after I've cleaned it and, uh, I clean it, dry it, spray it, and I'll let it sit in the bathroom until it hardens up, you know, five minutes do this every time. It seems like a lot of work, but honestly, it keeps my printer from getting gummed up with the crap, and uh, I have like four sheets of glass, so I usually do them all at once. I always have clean sheets until it's time to clean it, but when I spray them with hairspray and everything, let them sit, they're fine. The hairspray will last like three or four prints. I do it every time, but it's pretty much a waste. I don't know why I do it, but I got four sheets, so... It doesn't, I don't do it all the time, it's just when I run out of four sheets, I go clean all four and treat all four with the hairspray, and then I'm going to go for four prints. And the glass is like $2 a sheet or something, so it's well worth the time and effort. Just go to your local hardware store, get some uh, 200 by 200 millimeter sheets cut. Uh, some people get the corners cut off. Uh, I use these little clips to hold my glass on. There's much better ways. It's just the way I've always done it. And it actually, these things have gotten in the way a few times with prints. So I recommend finding a better way. Um, but yeah, I've printed tons of different things. Mostly I focused on turbines. Um, I found that this plastic right here, uh, it's Hatchbox. Um, it's this green, uh, what is this stuff called? Hatchbox 3D printer. It's this uh, translucent green. The stuff it prints incredible. It's it's like hard as Lexan. I mean, this stuff's I don't know. I can't talk about it enough. I'm sure everybody's got their favorite, but this happens to be mine. So anyway, until later. All right, we're here. Let's see, 65 percent mark. Project's coming together pretty good. Looks like I don't see any gloss, so let's wait to we'll wait for it to finish up printing. We'll see the results. Uh, we just hit 99%, oh, 100% on the good board. We done that banging at the end. All right, so my buddy's project's all set. Check it out, Jay. There it is, it doesn't look like much. There it is. Just gotta tear the thing apart and put it together. Little tip for uh, people that 3D print. Put it in the freezer when you're done printing. Well, first I put it in the fridge for five minutes and then freeze it for five minutes and then bam, it literally pops right off. No work necessary. That is the way to do it. As you can see, it's a pacifier. It's a Lego pacifier. It's a little rough. I printed it at low resolution. Um, of course, I didn't assemble it. You have to glue these two pieces.
pieces together and then the other part snaps in but you put a um, you put the uh, nipple for the um, pacifier in first and it attaches to the other part 